I would sooner die than stop sacrificing these archaeologists. It's true! <laughs> Crypt Worlds! Your darkest desires come true! Crypt Worlds is a 2013 adventure game made by Cicada Marionette slash Lilith Zone. Crypt Worlds is a bit of an odd be- Hold on, let me fix something. There we go. Crypt Worlds is a bit of an odd beast. It's a first-person adventure game made in the Unity engine, but... God, I don't think I can even really adequately explain the premise of this game. I think it'd be better if the game told you in its own words, because it has to be witnessed to be believed. Welcome to my realm. I have called you here on important business, the fate of this world. The legions of Dandigar have managed to displace the five goddess relics and render me powerless before him. It's getting me down. Dandigar is now making final preparations for total destruction of the crept planes from his base of operations, deep in the tunnels of the Black Crypt. It must end here. And even worse, Dark whispers from the void discuss the return of the Chaos God. It would be utter chaos if it was revived. These evil jerks with their disdain of order and lust for crime will ruin my cool world if they aren't stopped. I spent a long time making this place, you know, to regain my powers and crush these obnoxious pests. I will first need to get back the five goddess relics which I have now lost. It's very important. When you have recovered them, come find me. In the depths of the crypts, you have 50 days before Dendigar ruins everything. I'll be waiting for you. Now, wake up. And with that, you're dumped into your house by Marania and sent on your merry way. So yeah, you're essentially the chosen one, and you have 50 days to find the goddess relics before Dendigar takes over the world. The Crypt World. Like I said before, there's really no easy way to describe this game. If I was forced at gunpoint to categorize this game, I'd lump it in with stuff like Dear Esther or You May Nikki, but that's honestly an unfair comparison to both of those games. A more accurate statement is that this game is more reminiscent of mid-90s PlayStation 1 games, where it's just a bunch of really strange stuff happening, and what you're supposed to be accomplishing is kind of deliberately vague. I guess if this game had to have a genre, it'd be Dicking Around Simulator. You can do all sorts of weird-ass stuff in this game, and aside from collecting the goddess relics, it's never really entirely clear what the point of it all is. Crypt Worlds is an experience. Crypt Worlds is a feeling. The fact that you're given 50 in-game days basically gives you the right to take your time and do a little sightseeing. Let's run down the list of things you can do. You can eat corpses, dig through the trash for profit and pleasure, urinate on things, Eat burgers at the local McDonald's. Watch a bunch of old-timey pilgrims engage in a civil war. Literally go to hell. Take part in an ancient prophecy to summon the devil from fucking hell and have him kill everybody. Become a farmer. Perform the Black Sacrament to summon an ancient VHS tape from beyond the void. Pay an archaeologist poverty wages to dig up long-buried underground civilizations for you. And so much more. The entire experience feels like a fever dream, and most of what happens in the world makes you question how real any of this is. You're ostensibly supposed to be someone that explores crypts to find treasures, but you're only actually required to explore like two crypts to finish the game. All you really have to go off of is the exposition dump at the start of the game. It's honestly a pretty bold assumption on Marania's part that she'll actually do what she tells you to do. She just picks some random guy and decides that guy is the chosen one! You'd think when the literal fate of the world is at stake, she'd be a bit more selective. You'd think she'd pick the Dragonborn or something, but apparently this world gets the heroes it deserves, not the heroes it asks for. In all honesty, almost nothing here presents any real threat to you. There's no real combat system or anything like that. All you can do is barter and talk with people, eat things, piss on and or in things, and grow crops. I'm not kidding about the piss thing, by the way. You can piss on pretty much anyone and anything. There's an ancient crypt that requires you to piss on it to open it. For crying out loud, there's even a cult of golden beetles that consider your piss a sacred offering to their god. It reminds me a lot of Postal 2, and it even largely works the same way it did in that game, minus the fact that there's a meter here that you refill by eating and drinking things, which, need I remind you, includes corpses! 
It's not often you get to play as a cannibal with a hypersensitive bladder. Video games! That actually raises a good question. Are you human? The humans in this game world are all compressed stock photos, and there are other things you can talk to that debatably aren't even human. You don't even look like the other humans. Complicating matters even further, if you go to Mark Donald's after two weeks have passed, the mainframe that runs the restaurant has gone rogue and asks you to turn all the customers into cyborgs. At this point, you're a cyborg that can hack and piss oil. But people still treat your urine as if it's urine and I... I'm talking about piss mechanics in a game. What's my life coming to? Anyway, as I was saying, you have 50 days to collect the five goddess relics and give them to Morania, but that time limit is actually pretty generous. Certain things only happen when a specific number of days have passed, but even considering that, you can very easily get all the relics in less than half the days the game gives you. A day only passes when you sleep. Really, the only real threat here to you is yourself. There's a reason your character's face is in the bottom left corner. It's actually a hunger meter. If your character is smiling, they're full. If they have a neutral expression, they're fine. If they look like they're in pain, they need food badly. The ruler of everything even tells you that you need to eat or you'll die. If you don't eat, you go to the afterlife and sit in the waiting room so you can think about the fact that you're too rock stupid to even eat. Wait, why does the afterlife have a waiting room? What's really funny here is that you can actually just ignore Marania's whole request if you really feel like it. All you really have to do is keep yourself fed, and conveniently, anytime you eat something, it gives you resources that you can grow in your backyard. This includes meat and corpses, by the way. You can grow bodies in your backyard! <laughs> Normally, you're supposed to trade these for money and items, but you can actually just grow peaches in your garden for the sole purpose of keeping yourself fed. You can literally just decide to lock yourself in your house and spend every day growing peaches and harvesting them while Dendigar puts his plans into motion. He's taking his sweet ass time working on them, but he is working on them while you sleep all day and sit on your ass eating peaches. Eventually, Dendigar brings about the end of the world, and even though he caused it, most of this is on you, in my opinion. You sat on your ass and did nothing, even though you were given more than enough time to do what you needed to do. It's like that Tumblr mental health logic, where they say to take as much time as you need and do things at your own pace, but taken to its logical extreme. You didn't do what you were supposed to do, and now the world is fucking gone! Nice work, genius! This is honestly funny in a really morbid way. You made a decision by flat out refusing to make a decision, and it had undeniable consequences on the world, but hey, you did what you wanted to do, and the world paid the price for it. That's not something you see every day in video games. Of course, since you ideally want the good ending, you probably won't do that, which means you'll go around looking for the relics and talking to people. Do you have the relics yet? No! Well, scram nerd. Roughly every five in-game days, the game world changes in some way or another. There are some side quests that are a little confusing to figure out if you don't have a guide, but for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. Most of the appeal is just engaging with all the weird people and stuff in this world. All of the characters are really weird in some way or another, honestly, and the stuff they say ranges from funny, to deranged, to completely nonsensical. There's this entire subplot about a village of pilgrims, pronounced and spelled Pilgrimes, going to war with each other. There are ten gold beetles from the beetle cult for you to find by pissing in piss holes and pissing off, or rather pissing on, certain people. You can talk to this nightmarish homunculus who wants a VHS tape that belongs to a serial killer so badly that he'll literally trade you the keys to his house for it! Although if he gives you the keys to his house, how is he gonna watch the VHS tape? You can also literally go to hell, which, as it turns out, is a video game studio. Yeah, sounds about right. After talking to Shaggy Miyamoto, you can talk to the developers and... Uh... What does that say? Save file corrupt, sorry and write start new gain, watch out. Oh. That's probably bad. Okay, hold on a second. Serious warning, if you have epilepsy or are prone to epileptic seizures, you might want to look away. Here's a time code for you to skip to. Alright, warning's been given. Five... Four, three, two, one. Ah, damn it, I broke the game world. 
That's right. If you interact with too many NPCs over and over, you get sent to the glitch world, and the only way to unfuck the game is to defeat the big glitch. You really can wreak some serious havoc on this world, all things considered. Forcibly turning people into cyborgs against their wills, corrupting the very fabric of the game world, making a pact with an ancient god to bring about the end of days? Oh yeah! I almost forgot to mention that! There are these three chaos tiers that you have to go out of your way to collect, and if you do that and then go to the afterlife, you can summon the chaos god and have it purge the world of all life! Whose bright idea was it to leave jewel stones that can cause Armageddon just laying around? Don't they realize that you're a menace to society? It really isn't every day that you can play as someone who is directly responsible for the end of all things. Being a hero is great! Great job. You ruined everything. I hope you're happy, you nerd. The game is basically unwinnable at this point, so your only real choice is to start a new game and try to resist your insatiable urge to kill. So anyway, after buying so many burgers at the local fast food joint that they give you a private suite, yes, really, and paying a load of gold given to you by golden beetles that worship your urine, again, yes, really, to buy more goddess relics, you're finally ready to take on Dendigar and save the world! You've got the relics! Finally, it took you forever. Now then, we're going to be taking my cool robot fighter to the moon to destroy Dendigar's forces. These relics are exactly what I need to power it up. We'll need to find his big war spaceship thing so we can shoot it out of existence. Now, get ready. We're going to the moon! Come on! Dendigar's plan is to use his spaceship to launch a bomb at an asteroid to blow up the planet. But I guess since you got all the goddess relics, he had a change of heart because Dendigar sacrifices himself to stop the bomb from hitting the asteroid and destroying the world. I guess that's one way to solve the problem. Marani is happy if nothing else. And with that, you've saved the world from Dendigar and restored peace to the realm. And that's Crypt Worlds. It's weird. Really, really weird. But undeniably charming at the same time. I don't think there's too many other video games out there that are quite as surreal as this game is. It's an almost one-of-a-kind experience, as long as you're willing to experience someone else's fever dream in the process. It's not even really that long of a game either. Even without a guide, I finished my first playthrough in about two and a half hours. There's so much genuinely bizarre dialogue and character interactions that if I tried to cover all of them, this video would easily be twice the length it is. This game is free, so if you've enjoyed what you've seen here, consider giving it a try. I've left a link to it in the description. Anyways, thanks for watching! Oh my god, you guys, you're not gonna believe this. Mew was under the truck the whole time! We were just looking in the wrong game! This game also comes with another game packed in, Horrible Screaming Murderer 4, The Game. You play as three girls trying to get away from the titular Horrible Screaming Murderer. Makes me wonder if his parents named him that, or if it was a title he was given, because if it's the former, aren't you just kind of guaranteeing your child will become a Horrible Screaming Murderer? Either way, there's no real point to it. All you do is run until Horrible Screaming Murderer gets you. Maybe it's supposed to be some sort of commentary on the inevitability of death and the futility of life. Or maybe it's just some crazy-ass hobo eating a bunch of teenage girls because he feels like it. I don't know. Choke. Sob. You poor girls. I've treated you so cruelly. Well, I suppose it can't be helped. Man delights not me. No, nor woman either. Maybe I should play a video game. I know! I'll play my favorite video game. Crypt Worlds, your darkest desires come true. I deserve it. After all, I'm getting better. Yes, every day, in every way, I am getting better. Once in a while comes an artist with a vision so distinct that it has the power to crystallize the voice of an entire generation. Crypt Worlds, your darkest desire, is such an artist. Her work comes from a deep wellspring of feelings and images that are sure to remind you of things that have happened in your life as well. For example, much of the experience takes place in rooms, and I have been in a room before. Perhaps you feel the same. If so, you have a new friend in Crypt Worlds, your darkest desire. 
I met up with C.W. on her ranch in Maine, where she was wrangling horses in preparation for the county fair. I was impressed with her handling of these beautiful yet large animals. Perhaps the skills involved in game making are not dissimilar. Her eyes, violet, sparkle with genuine warmth at the suggestion as she gently pulls my mouth open to inspect my teeth. Imagine a world without sides or borders. A world where it's possible to literally do or go anywhere you could possibly desire. CW explains over a fine white pasta in one of New York's hottest new boutiques. She frowns. Understand, you would not be living in this world. You would be imagining the condition of its existence. The distinction is emphasized by placing me in an inescapable headlock. I understand. In this world, communication is so rare. What is Crypt World, your darkest desire? What most people like to think of as video games aren't video games at all. Understand, I'm not dismissing these experiences as inferior. I'm saying they don't exist. They never happened. Crypt Girls, Your Darkest Visions, is the only video game produced ever. Apropos of nothing, she adds, the music smokes. And may it be a worthy one, I dare to say. Crypt Worlds laughs raucously at this before attempting to screw my head completely around in case it contains a prize. It's an optimism that stands in stark contrast to the simplistic negativism of the so-called art world who won't return my phone calls or make eye contact with me in the street. At 10.40 a.m., I'm in the Mojave Desert. There is no water or shelter for several hundred miles around. I am all alone here. The desert nomads speak of a silence capable of leveling the petty aspirations of man. I remove my shoes and begin to walk. After two days, I have died of dehydration, and there are scorpions nesting in my mouth. Am I playing Crypt Worlds, or is Crypt Worlds playing me? I get back to my apartment, still heavy from going round for round at Boston's happiest crab fishery, with, I am now convinced, the foremost and only game developer of the 21st century. Cue up some ambient techno on the monitor and check my emails. I'm not surprised to find a message there from Cicada Industries, or am I? A1, apologies for the snake bite. You must have smelled wrong to him, and I suspect moral failings. The beta release version Crypt Worlds is attached. There is no attachment. Or am I writing the attachment right now? You hold in your hands the first specimen of its type recorded in all the annals of man. Some parts may frighten you. Others, it will terrify. There will also be some people who will spill coffee on the desk and wreck it. The tragedy of man is the inability to truly face our own desires without laughing or throwing up. Crypt Worlds has opened a door. It's up to you to walk through it. Your darkest desires are about to come through. I'll see you on the other side. Lots of love. A1 Reviews, 2013.